Go ahead and take a look at the commit logs. Go ahead and look at the mail lists. Um, how many people are involved in the project? Is it just one guy? Is there, are there people answering questions on the mailing list? Are there people answering the questions on the mailing list? Um, some of the developers, right? We can look at the usernames and the same type of mid logs and then look at the minutes and see who's closer. Can you get an idea who's involved? Um, actually, just as simple as when was the last post or commit, right? So if you download a project, it seems it has everything you need, and it's even marked version 6.4, and you have this to be less than stable. But the last commit was three years ago. What's that like? It's really safe. <laughs> <laughs> yes, except Windows 7 wasn't available for 6.4 until so you go through this business. Um, could be, could be. Um, these are not rules, these are just hints. Okay? And again, those of us who have been around the open source world, we may kind of do this reflexively, but this is something to think of. Um, okay, licensing. Um, every open source project I claim. Um, should have on its home page all the licenses. And that's a key indicator as to how much the open source developers care about their users and how much they can look the problems of their software. Let's talk a little bit about licensing. What does copyright mean? So we use copyright to uh, license our software. Copyright is a US federal law uh, it's designed to protect expressions, and that could be of music, or paintings, or text, or even some parts of your books. It grants the exclusive right, this is from the US Federal Code, it grants you the exclusive right to display, perform, copy, or change that. This is not the same as patents. Patents are for um, ideas, not physical embodiments of things. Um, or trademarks, right? I use a particular uh, PowerPoint template. Um, I like particular colors. Um, I have a name called Flax and Geo. Uh, those are all brands. Those are part of Flax and Geo's trademarking. Um, I'm really smart, so I have some patents that I filed for, but the code that I write falls under copyright. Collectively, all three of these are going to pay a bunch of property or only interested in your copyrights. Well, Software, of course, can be expressed as text, particularly if you're just checking around source code. So, source code is subject to copyright law. So, you, the writer of a piece of C code or C sharp code, has the exclusive right to display perform change code, that text. And, of course, you have the right to give those rights to other people. Good piece of part. So here's the clever bit. What if you take this and you say, okay, I'm going to explicitly say everyone else can use my stuff in such a way that as long as they follow whatever rules I say, they can do that. Well, this sort of takes the notion of copyright and turns on its head, because rather than giving my saying, I'm the only one who has exclusive rights, I'm saying, you know what? Everyone else has exclusive rights. Exclusive. Everyone else has exclusive rights as well to do whatever they want. We call it copy left. Therefore, open source is not given away. It is not public domain. In fact, there is no legal concept in the US of public domain. Open source is a very, very rigorous, legally defined term. It's well established. So, you've got a project that you're, that you're either going to develop some code or you're looking to download and start using the project. Um, there's two kinds of licenses in the world. Some people refer to them as the good kind and the bad kind. I'm going to try to be people who didn't mind about that. There's what's called ad academic or attribution licenses, um, commonly referred to as MIT or BSD licenses. The idea here is that you can take this code and do whatever you want with it, including make modifications 
and keep those modifications to yourself and ship them only minor. GDAL, you probably know that. Um, but GDAL uses the BSD uh, MIT. We have to use the MIT license. And so what that allows me to do, say as a commercial vendor, is I can take GDAL, I can make any modifications I need that fit my particular world, bundle it into my closed source proprietary app to ship it. As a commercial vendor software that I used to be in the recent, that's very good. I can do whatever I want, modify it myself, and never need to tell anybody or give anything back. Some people, and that's called free as in here. Some people follow what's going to be free as in speech. And this is where the Free Software Foundation and Richard and Solomon get involved. This is a little bit cool. Um, the GPL, or the LGPL, if you will, the libraries, are a little different. Their goal is not to make the commons of code for everyone to use for anything, but a commons of code for everyone to share. So the difference here is that if you're in the GPL world, I, as a commercial <coughs> vendor, if I modify that library that I've taken down to fit my own needs, I can't ship without a list research. So in the case of GDL, for example, if I had modified and fixed and bugs without telling anybody, I would actually need to release the source code a lot more for this program. For vendors, they like playing up here, because they can do whatever they want. For people that exist more exclusively in the free world, free software, they tend to play up here. As a vendor, I couldn't use any GPL software, for the most part, because the, the GPL also has um, what is disparagingly called the library clause, meaning that code that gets entangled with GPL becomes GPL. So, not just if I went and fixed a bug in some GPL package, <clears throat> but if I incorporate the GPL code into my larger application in most common ways, suddenly all of my applications have been GPL libraries. There's an exception to that. <clears throat> if I can set up my code such that I only link to it in a very standoff, arm's length way, I believe this is where that station is right now, um, then that's okay. If you're only shipping it as a DLL, you can keep it as GPL, and the rest of your application is safe and not subject to these boundaries. So, are you a developer or a user? If you're a user, you probably don't care, because you're just using it, and neither one of these is one. If you're a developer, you need to think about who your community is and what kind of software you're doing. If you're building a library that you want other people to use, specifically other commercial vendors, you need to be there. Or, you may want to stay in here in order to foster more bugs coming back in. Unless people may adopt it, um, but those who do adopt it will have to use it back in. So, be aware that there are two kinds of licenses um, academic or GPL or BSD. Finally, I'll note that all licenses should be approved by the OSI. Uh, OSI is the Open Software Institute. Um, they are the ones that founded. Or, uh, set in stone uh, a very short list of key principles that open source software must adhere to. They maintain what's widely considered the efficient list of licenses that are truly open source. You might want to guess how many licenses are approved as open source right now. Any other guesses? It's a lot higher than one. Less than 100, but it's higher than one. Everybody will tell you because everybody and his brother, at some point, a few years ago, was trying to write their own version of this. IBM, uh, Microsoft, Mozilla, Apache, everybody was their own slightly different. They all fall into these two camps, but also they do. Um, do not write their own versions. The world does not need one. Um, these have been reviewed by lawyers um, much better than you would want. So just know, as you're pointing on your app, make sure that that's really what's going on. Well, you don't have to mess yet. That would be the Microsoft Permissive License. Um, I don't know which camp it falls into. I'm trying to make sense of the things. I don't know. It's hard not to read short licenses. If you look at GPL uh, version 3 that came out, 
it is a pain in the Somebody's going to be able to And some of them have very constraint to say, I'm going to slide into this bed. Some of the licenses start to get into things like, uh, can you, um, so there's a patent clause that says that uh, if you try to enforce any patent rights, but be aware, if you're working in patent software, you get a license. Uh, and there's also some good books on this. Okay, so that's how to find the project you need. How to get help. Um, so you found the project, you downloaded it, and it's not built, or it doesn't do what you want. You've got to go. Don't say it doesn't. Do say, when I go like this, you have to go like that. Okay? This may seem real obvious, um, but I certainly need to think of myself. If something doesn't work, your first major reaction is to send out some emails to somebody and say, eh, it doesn't work. Um, stop. Stop. They have to do it. And actually provide some emails. What version of the software are you using? What OS are you using? What other tools do you have in your path that may be affecting this? Um, exactly what are the steps that you went through to reproduce this? What it is very trying. This is common sense, right? Be courteous with those who are going to help you provide up front as much information. Um, but at the same time, have proper expectations. We, and I'm speaking here as the royal, speaking as a representative of the open source development community, we are not going to write the code for you. Um, so if you, talk, you write us and say, hey, there's this bug, don't expect us necessarily to fix it, certainly not your end. We don't have your data sets. So, hey, this doesn't work when I send in this 10 gigabyte file. Well, I don't have your 10 gigabyte file. We can have your hardware configuration, right? Some bugs are truly, truly nasty. They depend on the hardware configuration. Specifically, for example, if you're playing in the world of DirectX, Ralph's hardware. You can't necessarily produce it. All right. And just because you want some custom feature, don't expect us to add it. It's not that. So, set expectations properly. You want to add a new engine to the project? Yes. Nor normally, answer homework questions. Um, <laughs> if your question is formed of the phrase, my professor asks for. Um, questions are not bugs, right? Odds are, the thing that you have, the issue that you have, is not a bug, it's a question. Do your homework first, search the mailing lists, and go on IRC. Who knows what IRC is? Okay. That's the button. IRC is a, um, an old Unix-style uh, big free really chat before there was instant messaging in IRC. Most of the major open source packages, IRC channels, but the developers still want to talk to each other and to visit all the sort of by through this this way across the world. So we just chat with IRC. So you can pop on the IRC channel and say, hey, excuse me, I have a question. Okay, pretty good response.